in one hindi film they said there are only three things that matter in a film entertainment 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 similarly in hedge fund accounting and in hedge funds and investment banking there are only three things that matter two understanding how hedge funds outperform the world the first one is performance the second one is performance and the third one is performance again hello everybody and welcome to my youtube channel i'm your learning partner sushila hari haran if you are interested in a career in fund accounting corporate action state life cycle and otc derivatives do subscribe to my youtube channel and keep watching these videos because you know these are very helpful in helping you enhance your career skills as well as interviewing capabilities as you grow up the career ladder in a large investment bank or in a large hedge fund when does a funds nav change this video has been purely made because so many people have asked me this question on linkedin on youtube why does the nav of a fund change so often okay so let's understand what is the concept of an nav i've already uploaded a video on understanding what is the concept of an nav i've already uh, told about how nav is calculated what are the factors that go into consideration so now that we know that this is the nav of a fund let's try and explore under what circumstances the nav changes successful investing is about managing risk and not avoiding it these are the words from benjamin graham considered to be one of the best investors in the history of stock markets across the world and this is exactly the philosophy that hedge funds employ as well they do not worry about avoiding risk in fact though the term is hedge funds they hardly hedge all their positions they always look to maximizing their returns and minimizing the risk not avoiding the risk so let's understand the concept of nav which stands for net asset value as you already know in hedge funds operate on the concept of pooled funds so the concept of an nav exists for mutual funds that retail investors subscribe to it also applies to unitized hedge funds hedge funds that are uh, set up as llcs okay so there are two types of hedge fund structures one that are set up as partnerships if they are set up as partnerships then you have the investor allocation if they are set up as a llc then they have unitized uh, their allocations to every investor's contribution the nav is calculated at a fund value okay it is also calculated at a unit value now these are very important categorizations okay so at a fund value it shows the performance of the fund as a whole at a unit value it shows the returns to each and every investor depending upon the units that they have got in that specific hedge fund so the nav is a extremely complex calculation not only because of the number of items that are calculated and taken into consideration it's also complex because the accounting rules have to be followed many people wrongly assume that hedge funds are unregulated in fact these are one of the questions i often ask that i uh, you know are hedge funds regulated and they say no they unregulated look literally hedge funds control almost 3 to 4% of global market swings okay we cannot allow such a large entity to be unregulated they do not have disclosures unlike mutual funds which have daily disclosures weekly disclosures monthly disclosures hedge funds do have disclosures only to their partners but not at a public scale not on a public scale they need certain regulations approvals etc from the sec securities exchange commission in the united states and only after they getting those permissions and approvals they are allowed to invest so hedge funds in practices of best accounting principles and guidance adhere to either ifrs uh, and gap norms across the world so that the accounting numbers are not fudged there's no accounting fudgery forgery and so on and so forth in nav is always measured in usd in the united states market and inr and indian markets because we have to be able to explain why nav changes on a daily basis 
Let's go back to the understanding of what are hedge funds. As we know, investors in different colors and shades provide capital to the AMC, that's the asset management company. So why do investors give capital to the asset management company? So you understand in, in corporate entities, the companies take money and they invest in land, building, plant, machinery, they build textiles, etc., etc. But in hedge funds, they're using the capital to give better returns on the capital employed. So you trust somebody with your money because of those three factors, performance, performance, performance. Okay, so as simple as that. So when investors give their capital to somebody who is considered to be better than them at investing, then obviously performance always matters. So now the capital flow has gone from multiple investors into the asset management company. The asset management company pools this capital. Okay, they pool this capital. Typically, this is in a single currency. If it's in dual currency, then the currency risk conversion is generally borne by the investors. Okay, the asset management company then denominates all of them into a single currency. Let's say investor one has given $30,000 to the AMC, investor two has given $10,000 to the AMC and investor three has given $20,000 to the AMC. The AMC now has got a pool of $60,000, that's $30,000 plus $10,000 plus $20,000 giving us a total sum of $60,000. In acknowledgement of the capital received, the asset management company must allocate to the investors units. Okay, And these units are given in proportionate to their capital investment that is called as pro rata or a pro rata allotment. So the AMC, let's say at the start of the fund, the NAV is $1, the AMC gives 30,000 units because investor has given $30,000. Similarly, to invest second investor, they have given 10,000 units and to the third investor, they have given 20,000 units. Okay, the asset management company then uses this pooled capital of $60,000 to invest across different assets like equities, uh, bonds, fixed income, foreign exchange, as well as commodities. Comms over here standing for commodities. The job of the asset management company is to invest into multiple assets, into different strategies, depending upon what is mentioned in the uh, pre -place, private placement memorandum, there's a PPM, as to what would be the investing strategy of the asset management company. You have to be very clear about that because then only you'll be able to understand whether the in, uh, asset management company is investing in equities, foreign exchange bonds, or commodities. Comms over here standing for commodities. The asset management company at the time of taking in money from the capital and closing the fund, okay? So that's called as time T0. So they close the fund, they collect the capital, they close the fund. So they collect the capital during the period, like an IPO, during the period when it's open, they collect the capital from different investors, they close the fund, they allot the units to the different investors. At this point of time, the assets under management, AUM, okay, is $60,000, and the number of units issued is 60,000 units because the NAV at time T0 is equal to 60,000. You can have any amount of NAV at this point of time. It doesn't matter. There is no rule in the United States which talks about what should be the beginning NAV at all. Equity. Let's take a look at some of the scenarios in which this NAV changes over a time span. Why would the portfolio value of this $60,000 change? Equity prices, as you know, are very, very volatile and they would increase or decrease depending upon whether the markets are in a bull run or a bear run. If the markets are in a bullish run and the stock prices are going up, then the equity prices are also increasing. The portfolio has uh, increased as well. A, third situ a second situation is issuer has paid dividends to the investors. Issuer has done a spin-off, demerger, etc. Let's explore some of these examples under which NAV has changed. The portfolio value, let's say at time T0, the portfolio value is $60,000. There's a crazy bull run in the market. The price of all the stocks are going up. And at the end of one year, wow, this is really a rock star hedge fund manager. Something like the one that we see in billions on, um, on, the, on the OTT. 
At T1, the portfolio has increased from 60,000 to 90,000. So this is incredible performance, complete outperformance from time T0 to time T1. Let's assume that's just one year in the middle, okay? One month will be too aggressive. Let's assume there's one year in the middle, yeah? The fund value has increased dramatically because of the bull run. And uh, the 60,000 uh, dollars has now become $90,000. So each of those investors now experience a change in the NAV of their fund. Dividend received from the portfolio, another example. The fund has bought 25,000 shares of KH Inc. Okay. And this fund has, this uh, company KH Inc. has announced a dividend of $1 per share. The hedge fund receives $25,000 as dividends. Now be extremely careful about this calculation. I've asked this question on my LinkedIn as well as to what happens when you receive dividends from the uh, from the in investments that you've made. Okay, now you look back into your own personal experience. If you've bought a share, all right, and the, the share issuing company has announced a dividend, the dividend goes into your bank, okay? But the share price comes down to the same extent on the X date. If you've not noticed it, then go ahead. I mean, uh, we've just completed earning seasons uh, in India. Uh, so you may not get much dividends anymore from now. But the next time around, when you have in August, September 2024, you'll have a lot of dividend announcements and credits into your bank account. Take a look at that. Okay. As to what extent would the performance of the stock come down because of the dividend announcement. So let's remember these points. Fund has bought 25,000 shares of KH Inc. The company has announced a dividend of $1 per share. The hedge fund will receive $25,000 as dividends. Here, I'm not even asking you to calculate what is the dividend yield, etc., because that is only for, and that's not an accounting uh, procedure to follow at all. The dividend received on X date the market price of the shares decrease. Okay, now this is a very important point to understand. X date is the date on which the share will quote at a price such that if the investor buys the share on the X date, they will not get the dividend. Okay, that's the meaning of X date. If you're having confusion about what is the X date, go back to the announcement of corporate actions and you'll understand what is the meaning of X date because the corporate actions announcement will clearly tell you which is a record date and which is the X date. So on dividend X date, the market price of the shares, will it increase or decrease? Okay, and this is a common, this is another two, uh, quiz that I'd asked on my LinkedIn, whether the market price of the shares decrease or increase, uh, you buy a share because you're going to receive the dividends. So once the dividend is received, the money has got into your, has got credited into your bank account, obviously you will have to that extent the loss of the share value. The dividend is announced as $1 per share. The portfolio value will decrease by $25,000 because you have got a dividend of $25,000 on a holding of 25,000 shares of KH Inc. You've received that credit into your bank account, right? The dividend has already come into your bank account on the X date only, for a brief period of time, the stock price will reduce. At the end of that particular day, the portfolio will reduce, okay? So keep your eyes and ears open for any dividend announcements and their impact on NAVs, that is net asset values. Let's take another example of NAV changes in bonds. The portfolio value changes because of interest rate fluctuations. The issuer has paid the coupon. There's a redemption, there's a call provision that's exercised. Let's take some examples of what happens between bonds and interest rates. Bond prices and interest rates are inversely related. As we know that if bond prices increase, if interest rates increase, bond prices come down. If interest rates announced by the Federal Reserve decrease, then bond prices go up. Okay, so the bond prices are inversely related to the interest rates that are there in the markets. When interest rates increase, the bond prices fall, the hedge fund book could sell at a loss, okay? 
this is what happened to many of the hedge funds in the early start of 2022 when the Federal Reserve started its quantitative tightening policy and started hiking interest rates. The hedge fund, the Federal Reserve kept increasing interest rates very aggressively because of inflation levels being very, very high and increasing even now. But uh, the Federal Reserve had to tackle inflation and therefore they kept increasing the interest rates and uh, also doing quantitative tightening. And uh, because of which the bond valuations fell down, the hedge fund could end up selling at a loss. So if you look at an underperformance of a bond, head, bond fund, you'll understand that that's because interest rates in the markets are very, very high. When interest rates increase and the loss has been borne by the hedge fund because it sold those bonds at a loss, obviously the NAV of a bond fund would also decrease. The issue of pays coupon, the price of the bond falls on X date. So quite like what happens in dividend announcements. On the X date, to the extent that the coupon has been received by the fund, the bond price will decrease. Do you know why? Can you tell me why the bond price will decrease? Yes, because the bond price is a summation of all the discounted cash flows of the bond. So over here, bond price is equal to present value of all discounted cash flows. PV standing for present value of all discounted cash flows of the bond. The bond price formula, therefore, is the summation of all the cash flows that you're going to get. We discount it to the current value and we get the present value of that. So to the extent that you receive the dividends, the bond prices will also fall. So like this, there are multiple events that take place in a corporate actions, which impact and in non-corporate actions like this market performances, bull run, bear run, bull run in equities, bear run in equities, bull run in bonds, bear run in bonds. Commodity prices spiking, foreign exchange volatility, all of them impact NAV in different ways. It's for us as associates and executives working in fund administration to keep a close tab on these global events that impact the NAV of the fund. Thank you so much for listening in.